It's the Weekly Wrap with your host, broadcasting legend Bruce Wolf, and his trusty sidekick, comedian Tim Slagle. And now, without further ado, Bruce Wolf. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the Weekly Wrap. Now, my favorite part of the show, wherein Tim reveals his background. And I got to think behind you, Tim, the sky is a hazy shade of winter uh, in honor of the pestilence that came down from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> this week am i right about that tim let's see blame Canada. yeah <laughs> i got it is right okay yeah i you know here's the thing that you know they they say it's like a half a pack of cigarettes if you stay or six cigarettes if you if you stayed out all day or something that's not a lot i mean if you yeah. haven't been smoked it you can yeah. handle that no, I, I would smoke cigarettes, six cigarettes uh, uh, when I claimed I had quit. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, here's the thing. And they also said it was the we had the worst weather in the world. And I'm thinking, you know, it's not so bad in the rest of the world. You, 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 don't you keep thinking, why do all those Beijing billionaires move out of out of town? It's because of the smog. But I mean, you wouldn't leave your country over what? we were suffering uh the other day i mean i, I just or, and still are maybe I, yeah i don't know i can't believe i can't believe that we're actually worth it worse than beijing i i i, I, I don't believe I, it I find either. that yeah it's uh yeah maybe maybe worst in the first world i think is what they're saying it's the in the industrialized world you know the the part of the world that uh that they always cite when they're talking about uh national health care and uh uh gun control Sure. And a tip of the cap to our producer, uh, Chris, who's uh, showing right now on our screen, Blame Canada from South Park. So <laughs> another great song. Um, so just to show you how ignorant I can be on like Tuesday morning. So I, I like to jog like four or five days a week, just 20 minutes. There's a nice little forest preserve path. So, you know, I looked at the weather to see if it's OK. And it, it did say like 173 air quality poor. Well, that didn't seem like anything to me. And I hadn't heard any story about any wildfire smoke here. I knew that it had occurred in New York like last week. And um, yeah, I went outside and outside seemed fine. And I went and I jogged for 20 minutes and wasn't affected at all. I got into the house and and, and I will look for any excuse not to jog. You know, like <laughs> if I got to play, if I played golf the day before, well, that's plenty of exercise, even though I drove around in a car. Oh, no, I, I don't need to jog. I mean, I'll use any excuse. And this is an opportunity uh, wasted here because I actually gratuitously jogged two days ago when I shouldn't have. Uh, my wife was actually pretty upset with me and I haven't really been outside since. How is it out there? <laughs> It's it's fine. I've been camping before, you know. It's, <laughs> it's not yeah. that I, I it's not that big of a deal. What, it, what is one seventy two? What does that mean? What's what's that? I on don't a know. Scale? You know. That's that. That's like it's a bad the, golf score and an adequate bowling score. Sure. Well, it's not. Hmm, yeah. No, I don't even Ad, know if it's adequate. adequate bowling. The um. <laughs> no. It it's it, it's it reminds me of like when TV news reporters say. 300 flights were canceled at O'Hare. Well, how, out of how many? I don't I don't know how do I look like an aviation <laughs> expert? So what does the number 173 mean? Uh, but apparently, you know, if you go in your uh, your color scheme there, once you get to maroon, it's pretty you got to be a maroon uh, to go out. Uh, so, yeah, it was it was it was in the red zone most of the was, time. But yeah, right what, in the middle of right in the middle of unhealthy. Yeah, Just yeah, there. yeah. But apparently, you know, so I anyway, um, it's uh, enough to wear masks enough that they, they there's been suggestion. You might want to go back oh to those my masks. My God, I no, no I, I couldn't take that anymore. Yeah. So we should pivot a little bit to uh, we're taping this on Thursday. And of course, the Supreme Court came down with the the end to affirmative action uh, with an asterisk, of course, because already Harvard is figuring out ways to skirt uh, the ruling because, uh, I mean, if you read it, it's not even the fine print. They're still allowed to use race. Uh, and, and it's kind of like wink, wink. Don't say what color you are. But uh, as somebody said, say whether you prefer barbecue sauce on a steak or something. <laughs> or uh, they're saying but, they're um, saying they're saying they're going to do it through essays that they're going to that they're going to be well, able right, to. But, uh, how to, to me, that sounds a little that sounds a little uh, kind of. Uh, 
a, a racist. You know, yeah, because you're discriminated against people who can't read and write. And that's that's horrible. <laughs> no, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I the, actually the Supreme Court has addressed some of these uh, gambits like the essays. Uh, and, and you can't just say I'm this color. Let me in uh, over the Asian who got perfect SATs. You, you, but they're going to allow you to use code. Uh, so, uh, you know, like. My great, 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 great grandfather had to drink at a different drinking fountain. And I've had to overcome that six generations later or something like that. So um, there are going to be or why am I axing to be be admitted to Harvard? (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, here's the thing. The um, it's going to be litigated. This isn't the end. I mean, this is just a a series, the the first in a a series of cases, I'm sure, in which the court will have to. uh, figure out uh, and, and and draw uh, some uh, not not gerrymandered lines uh, regarding this. Uh, I think what you know, what you'll see in the immediate future is Harvard will uh, will admit one more Asian next year. So uh, and, and see if that's enough. Um, yeah, that kid with the 1590 SAT and the 4.65 GPA, I think. Might, <laughs> right. Uh, so, right. The National Review mentioned in their editorial today was kind of interesting that, you know, Elena Kagan did not recuse herself from this, even though she was the uh, head of the Harvard Law School and raised like half a billion dollars. Uh, and uh, and Harvard was a, a defendant in this. And of course, we've been talking about ethics in Supreme Court cases uh, for you know to trying to tie in Clarence Thomas and Samuel Alito uh, into some ethical violations when uh, Here's Elena Kagan. Oh, she didn't have to, re- you know, just because she she's like this with Harvard. She she could sit in on this case. Um, well, she's in the minority, so it doesn't matter anyway. Right. I mean, right. It, it, uh, but you what, know, you she know, wasn't going to flip it either way. What's interesting. And here is, you know, I, I remember how uh, Nixon was vilified when uh, you know I was growing up. I mean, he, he was, you know, the absolute incarnation of evil, which is ca- how you kind of get Trump decades later. It's like, well, if you think he was bad, we'll really give you something <laughs> to be upset about. And, and then maybe you'll shut your pie hole um, because Nixon did all kinds of liberal things. Wage and price controls, a rapprochement with China, uh, EPA. Family, EPA, family assistance plans. Fat, fat lot of good that EPA is doing in the city of Chicago <laughs> right now. Uh, and but also it was a Nixon appointee to the Supreme Court, Lewis Powell, who uh, uh, came up with this concept called diversity in the Baki case. Oh, really? All of a sudden, color for its own sake. And so it's only taken us, you know, four or five decades to start to get over it. Uh, so it's just, yeah, yet another liberal thing that, that was done. Uh, so, we, I mean, we'll see how that, how that plays out. I, um, yeah, it's what handy dandy Sandy O'Connor said. How many years ago that we had 25 more years of affirmative action? It's we're almost getting if we're not past that 25 year mark. But, um, yeah, I just uh, it it, it was heartening. You know, I love these bombshells from the Supreme Court last year. A year ago, it was Roe versus Wade. Uh, Today, it's affirmative action. I mean, next year, if they get rid of Marbury versus Madison and get rid of judicial review, (laughs) we just we're going to abolish ourselves. I mean, that that would be really good. Uh, That was Marbury versus Madison, wasn't it? Uh, I'll have to shepherdize that case. But um, <laughs> while we're uh, we got a moment here, uh, one. Uh, Tim, you had a tweet. I'm tra- oh, yes, it was. Tell us about bonus holes. <laughs> Tim, t- tell us about that. Well, apparently, apparently there was a, there was a website and they were talking about a changing the language, uh, correcting terms for, for you know, for, that are the trans friendly. And they said that trans men with vaginas should not call them vaginas. They should call them bonus holes. <laughs> yeah, I was and it sounds like I'm making that up. I swear I'm not. No, no, I know. That yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's I mean, I don't get it. I mean, are they are they upset because the trans men don't really have vaginas, so they feel discriminated against? So I, I, I don't even I, I don't even get that. <laughs> but just, I mean, I understand that it's crazy. Um 
and and I'm, some and some and some trans men might might like you know to brag about their vagina. They might, but uh, uh, yeah. yeah. But if, if they don't, it's uh, if they don't want to talk about it, they just call it their bonus. The bonus hole. hole, you know. And I see. I always think of the <laughs> bonus hole as the nineteenth hole in golf. You know, everybody repairs uh, to the grill for a drink, <laughs> but we'll have to, we'll have to be careful about that. When I golf, it's the clown's mouth. Yeah, That's uh, there usually. You go. The bonus well, hole. I mean, the clown's mouth would be an interesting uh, <laughs> euphemism uh, if we think about it. Uh, the but, clown's uh, mouth with a sideways grimace. Yeah, yeah, just a little <laughs> bit. All right. Um, are you planning on going to the NASCAR race uh, in Chicago this week? And I understand the hotels are not filling up like they did for Taylor Swift. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. So I, uh, I, maybe the trailer parks are. You know, so, I used to when they, they they used to have the Grand Prix in uh, Detroit and uh, ah. when, I was, when I was there and I used to there was a comedy club that was in the center of the track and I used to always book that week so I could get uh, free admission in and out of the track and uh, ah I, see. I mean did you get but did you get did you get crowds for your comedy act from from the uh, the Grand Prix yeah there, uh, yeah there was a little bit there was a little bit of overflow little people walking in. And uh, walking back out. But, I mean, did uh, you have any yeah. Grand Prix jokes? Because we could sure yeah. use a stock card <laughs> joke right now. <laughs> so it, you know, I don't. Uh, I, 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 it, it, it was a lot more difficult than it was worth. I mean, much, you know, some things are better to watch on television. Well, I, yeah, I don't understand that because you see it for like one split second, and and then it, it goes around, and you know, maybe you hear the hum. Uh, well, this might be bit. different because in Detroit it was like behind buildings. So I mean, you would only uh -huh. see you would only see like a, a slot in between two buildings going woo woo woo. But this is you know it's out on uh, is it Grant Park going around the fountain? Is yeah, that, uh, you know it might be akin. You know what's kind of neat when the air show is coming to town in in August and they're practicing and you you hear the the planes from behind buildings <laughs> and occasionally you see one dart over. So. <laughs> That, that's yeah, that's that's neat. what the Grand Prix yeah. was like in Detroit. Yeah. It was uh, it's uh, we, we had nice. At least there's one stretch of road that has the potholes fixed this weekend. <laughs> that's good. All right. Well, when we come back, uh, we promise we're going to have one more e Asian than we had in the first segment here. Bruce Will, Tim Slagle on the weekly. <laughs> the Hunter Biden story. The scandal, the this, the that, it's also the story of a father's love. And Joe Biden has never and will never give up on his son, son, Hunter, and will never treat him lesser than. And so he is a father first. Take it or leave it. Let's step back from the crocodile tears for one second and remember that Hunter Biden is a 53 adult man, not a child. And this is not a kumbaya moment or a prodigal son's welcome home. This is a story of corruption. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. That's uh, Anna Navarro of uh, was she the latest harpy on the View. Is that where she's she's from? <laughs> I, I can't remember, but uh, I think that's I think that's where it was. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, she's talking about it's a story of a father's love, the Hunter Biden scandal. Look, I mean, who among us doesn't think that when Vito Corleone told the Undertaker to uh, tidy up Sonny so that his mother didn't have to see him in that state, that that wasn't love. <laughs> and so, well, yeah, and, and, and I'm, I'm on, you know, I, I read this today that somehow, I, I don't know if it was Biden's press secretary or somebody else through Biden was saying is in denial. He will not lower uh, Hunter's visibility. And, um, well, what they're saying, what I heard was, is that they they don't they don't want to leave him alone. They they leave him alone. He's gonna he's gonna be with a crack photographed with a crack pipe and a hooker again. Well, I thought you so were that, saying that they don't want to leave Biden alone. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, yeah, it's a little of both. They they figure yeah, yeah what, what they can lock them both in at night. <laughs> yeah, that's why. So I so here I mean here's the problem. I mean you got this whistleblower now, and it seems like it's it, it's 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 resonating. Uh, the guy was interviewed by Brett Baer, and it just seems, uh, you know, there, there was there were, they, they tried to delay this because uh, and, and get things past the statute of limitations. Um, they were tipping off Biden's attorneys on things. And I mean, you might be even implicating Merrick Garland. I wish 
because he made the It's Academic team at Niles West in 1970, and I didn't make the It's <laughs> Academic team at Niles East in 1971. Yeah, I and wish. You could say, you could say, yeah, but who? Uh, <laughs> which, which of us was not impeached, Merrick? <laughs> exactly. So, which of us was not shot down for a seat on the Supreme Court? Oh, oh my Merrick. goodness. <laughs> Would that be the double, double win? of your existence i mean you work for decades building this reputation and basically you know you're just cannon fodder for barack obama uh for the supreme court i mean you know that he's thinking today oh i could have written a much better dissent than katenji jackson did <laughs> yeah but merrick that's why she's on the court because of affirmative action and you're not um, <laughs> but uh, like we need more Jews on the Supreme Court. The, when's the last time we had a Jew on the Supreme Court? Well, Kagan is Jewish, right? Yeah, she is. She she checks a lot of boxes. Jewish, lesbian, women. Um, yeah. Is she lesbian? I don't know if she's actually outed herself. It's uh, we. I think that's just an assumption because she looks like Mike oh. Myers. You know, there's a uh, as we say in the law, there's a rebuttable presumption that she's a lesbian. <laughs> Uh, OK, um, so anyway, I mean, it's, it, this isn't going away and there may even be suburban voters. You know how wishy washy they are, those suburban voters uh, who don't like the double standard of justice. So, uh, you know, Biden had better hope that somehow Trump uh, is cleared of uh, the, the heinous crime of wanting to uh, find a place for his golf shirts before he gave back the plans <laughs> to bomb Iran. <laughs> uh, but because you know, otherwise the plans to bomb, the plans to bomb Iran have not shown up. There was not an indictment of involving the plans right. to bomb Iran. Right. So the latest thing, it's a little confusing because there's a recording that CNN and other outlets were playing where uh, Trump is talking about those plans and he, ba he basically admits everything. The problem is, is that wasn't in that one wasn't in the indictment. Maybe maybe they'll supplement the indictment. I don't I don't know. But that is I, a little confusing. I have a question, counselor. Yeah. OK, if if one of the if those plans for Iran were not in part of the indictments, can that tape be still be used as evidence? That's a really good question. Do I look like a, a criminal lawyer to you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't if know. If you slipped and fell on the sidewalk the other day, give me a call. Okay. You got, you no, got, more, I mean, it's you a got good, more credit hours than I do. So I think what they would do is is just uh, amend the charges and say, oh, here's another another thing. Now, w will they be able to produce that document? That's a, that's a question because, uh, you know, you'd, you'd want to be able to produce the document that you're hinging your case on. So yeah, my uh, my my guess, and this is this is I have no yeah. I have no uh, letters after my name. My guess sure. is that uh, that's the reason why they're leaking it because they know they can't use it. So they want to get it out there in front of the potential jury, even though that they know if they try to bring it up in court, it's going to be denied because well, it has well, nothing to do it, with well, any the of the reason, charges. I, I mean, I mean, just let's use our common sense here. And I, you know, there's, there's no special knowledge that I'm claiming right here, but it's. I mean, they're going to have to get the document. If are we saying, are we really trying to say that Donald Trump was just making up a story, like he makes up crowd noise, crowd sizes, that that he was talking about a, a, a document that doesn't really exist, that if it's yes. all illusory? I mean, it's, yes, it, it could yes. very well be because because yeah. because he was being he was talking to a hot younger reporter. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> and so I he can wanted see to. You. Oh man, if I. Yeah, if I could, you could see these. Oh boy, you'd yeah. be shocked. But I can't show them to you because they're classic. It's more access Hollywood locker room talk. Uh, <laughs> if I showed them, exactly. If I showed them to you, I'd have to kill you. I mean, you know, <laughs> it could very well be. All right, uh, pivoting a little bit. So RFK uh, Jr. There's this theory, you know, because we've been seeing uh, he looks even fitter than Tom Fitton, and that's pretty fit. Uh, we've we've been seeing RFK Jr with his uh, shirt off recently. I don't know if you've seen any of these clips on social media, but he's doing, they, we see him uh, you know, doing bench presses and uh, uh -huh. push-ups, and and he's, I mean, he's, he's fit for any age, and I think he's about my age, and so I'm a little bit embarrassed there, but, um, but somebody was suggesting that maybe he's had work done. <laughs> Uh, and uh, talk about conspiracy. That, that's a conspiracy theory that RFK Jr. might subscribe to. Uh, 
that that he's had some work done. Boy, that sounds, uh, have, that, have that, sounds like, that sounds like a, that sounds like a couple old ladies at the college at the high school reunion, <laughs> doesn't it? Well, sure, you know she's had work done. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm I'm an old, you know. I yeah. mean, this guy puts me to shame. There's no question yeah. about it. Yeah, I, I hope, hope you know. Had, my, I hope he's had work done because otherwise I, I have no excuse. Yeah, me neither. And here's the thing. Uh, the late great Florence King, who used to write the misanthropes co- corner for National Review, once speculated that not RFK Jr., but JFK Jr. must have had work done because when he was a little kid, he had that, you know, that very Kennedy esque look with the big Adam's apple and the honker nose, whatever. And he disappears for a couple of years and comes back and is this ravishing guy. She thinks he had worked on. She thought he had worked on. So I'm thinking maybe it's something about those Kennedy juniors. It's possible uh, that they've, they've had to had work done. Who knows? So, you so know, it'd be really of, funny. Be really funny in the debates if he actually gets to debate Biden and gets him angry and Biden challenges him to a push-up contest. <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay, okay, let's go. I look. It's it's going to be like feats of strength in uh, in Seinfeld, you know, in, in Festivus. Uh, yeah, that, that you you know Chelsea had work done. She had she had her web Hubble removed. Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, she looks like she looks like Bill, doesn't she? You no, don't think she, she looks? Like- no, no. Put a picture of put her picture next to Bill and Web Hubble. You tell me what okay. she looks like. All right. All right. I, I, I'm willing. Hey, I want to buy that one. Uh, speaking of ex-presidents. So uh, was this Reuters or who somebody did a story, you know, trying to we're always trying to attach, you know, uh, white people to slavery, you know, a minute, uh, no matter how many centuries go by. But apparently all the living uh, ex-presidents, save one, one Donald Trump, that is, had ancestors that had ties to slavery. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, that, I knew you know, that. by itself should make Trump uh, highly electable, <laughs> I, I, w- I would think. But uh, I, I knew that about Obama. I, I did know that about Obama, which is well, actually... and that's the great thing. It's Obama, because through his mother's side, there was a connection to slavery. Yeah. And um, through his through his father's side, there isn't. I mean, he actually has, you know, he's entitled to zero reparate. He actually owes reparations because well, right, he has no, more. Right. He has well, more slave owner than he has slave. Yeah, but his him. father was. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to malign the guy any more than is necessary. But I mean, he's a drunk drunk who abandoned his kid. Am I am I right about that? I mean, he, no. Did he he's ever, a very he he's a very wealthy man. He's got several wives and a hundred goats. Is he still around? No, he died. No, he know. died. It had been 100 goats. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I just I just was thinking that uh, even Obama can't be exam- exonerated on, on that score or four score in, yeah. in seven years ago. So, I mean, yeah, that's uh, this is that's I guess the new bad. this is the new skull and bones connection, I guess, is a slave over slave owner ancestry. I just uh, and finally, I like to close these segments. I, I just decided today with a you know a little ha ha. So Ryan Seacrest is going to get like thirty eight million dollars a year without ever having even he doesn't. I mean, he hasn't even said his first consonant yet for uh, <laughs> for Wheel of Fortune, and he's getting thirty eight million dollars a year. How do we know if he can do the job? Yeah. Um, and Vanna apparently is threatening to quit. I guess you know they probably were only paying her like five or ten million a year. Well, she hasn't had she her complaint was she hasn't had a raise in uh, 18 years. Really? Right. So but then again, she hasn't had to turn a letter in 18 years. <laughs> right. so. How much is how mu- do you know how much she makes? Uh, no idea. Not a clue. Well, I mean, just I mean, just think how much she lost in the last couple of years because of inflation, you know, gas prices and everything. So, um, yeah, I, well, I, I feel for her. But, um, yeah, I. It's uh, well, she, and then she's essentially this, could have been put out of work by automation. I mean, it's uh, uh the, what what about the, why don't we just have the first A.I. host of a of a game show? I mean, it couldn't be worse than those Jeopardy hosts that they that they trotted out <laughs> who didn't even know the rules. Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. In today, 
Friday's edition of Rules for Thee But Not For Me. Here is Nancy Pelosi yesterday arguing for Supreme Court term limits. There certainly should be term limits. It's shameful how Thomas, as Justice Thomas and Justice Alito, have been so cavalier about their violations of what would be expected of a justice of the Supreme Court. Here we have a body elect, chosen for life, never have to run for office, uh, nominated, confirmed for life, with no accountability for their ethics behavior. This will Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. Uh, yeah, sure, uh, Nancy Pelosi, <laughs> who's now like 83 years old, uh, and well past her freshness date, uh, would like term limits for members of the court because of ethics violations. And, and, and uh, here's the thing. She's, she's very wealthy, but never violated ethics because she, right. she writes the ethics. Of course. So. There you go. Actually, we may have some de facto uh, term limits because it, 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 on the Supreme court, I'm kind of fearful. Uh, Thomas and Alito are old. I remember there were rumors that they would retire before the end of Trump's term. Uh, and, and they didn't. So you got a couple of guys who are old there. If they retire and Biden gets in again somehow or, or somebody else, some other Democrat, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked to see the Dobbs case overturned, the affirmative action case overturned, which which would I mean, it would be absolute chaos because I mean, it's one thing to upend a precedent after 50 or 80 years or whatever, like uh, Brown versus the Board of Education did the Plessy versus Ferguson with regard to separate but equal, and like uh, the Do Dobbs case did to Roe versus Wade. But if you all of a sudden undid, yeah. undid what this court just did in 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 a matter of a of a couple of years, and can't you see that possibly happening? Oh, absolutely. It's their style. I mean, it's everything, yeah. everything, every gain that Trump made in, in his four uh, uh, tortured years was overwritten, like within the first two weeks of Biden's term. And right. here's the here's the big question about that. If Biden wins again, can an impeached attorney general be nominated <laughs> to the Supreme Court? <laughs> I mean, that might be the first correction that he makes. Oh, man. I, I, I mean, it's I mean. Trump having become president, president, uh, I mean, sets a precedent for just anything that can happen. And uh, and I, I, I could see some of these cases being overturned. Now, of course, I would kind of like to see the Obergefell uh, gay marriage case overturned, um, so which is which isn't going to happen. And, you know, the thing is, is, is if it were overturned. You'd probably go back to like civil unions, <laughs> which is, of course, a complete fiction. I mean, it's it's actual <laughs> marriage, but without saying it. But, you know, when you had civil unions, you didn't have Bud Light losing all of its value <laughs> uh, because that that's what happened. It, it led the way. So maybe, you know, the maybe the the uh, symbolism by having civil unions and not calling it marriage uh prevented a, a Bud Light phenomenon. And I'm sure Anheuser-Busch would be in favor of that because I was reading somewhere that in some stores, Bud Light is actually cheaper than buying water. <laughs> now, <laughs> you could get you could get a case of Bud Light for cheaper than cheaper than water. They, they cannot get rid of this stuff. So but water tastes better. So oh, sure. <laughs> no, I'll grant it. I'll, I'll grant you that. But I, I mean, it, it's just fascinating to me that um, that that happened. So Garth um, Brooks insists that he's going to that he's going to uh, uh, sell blood, Bud Light in his new bar that he's opening, which. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah. think he's going to sell it. He might carry it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, I don't I mean, know it, how it, many, it, but many Garth Brooks fans are still uh, loyal to Bud Light. Yeah, well, more power to him. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to take state action against him uh, for for selling Bud Light. The um, so so over the weekend there was this disturbance in Lakeview, and you know it wasn't in you know Englewood or uh, you know in Lawndale. Uh, it was in Lakeview, and I'm trying to figure out what no. to make of it because the cops couldn't get these teenagers off the streets for like six hours. 
Has anybody ever heard of the words tear and gas? I mean, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, and they were twerking all over the place. And I don't know how much damp they didn't do. There were a couple of arrests. They d dented a, a, a number of cars. But there wasn't and and and, and an outlet like well, Channel okay. Nine actually got criticized by the Tribune writer Gregory Pratt for saying that the teens had taken over Lakeview. Um and uh, you know, and I and I responded to that by saying, Well, the new motto for Lakeview will be at least we're not Englewood. Uh so <laughs> I'm just but why would it take six hours to to disperse um, that? Well, you, you know, there's no, there's no, there's no crime in just getting off the L and, and wandering around Lakeview, is there? And dancing I mean, on cars, and well, yeah, well, that's yeah, but they weren't all dancing on cars. Yeah, you can get the one off the car and say, okay, that's not. Is that your car? Okay, well, you're not allowed to dance on it then. I mean, but it's so all right. So you're not making a, a big deal out of it, okay? Well, okay. First of all, uh, the Belmont stop uh, uh, on the red line. That's uh, that's Boys Town, isn't it? Excuse me, I whenever you talk, I gotta go. Belmont change for the Ravens award. Okay, because <laughs> it's the one imitation I can do is the the old L conductor. I mean, they don't even have the Ravens with line anymore. But yeah, it's okay. So oh, okay. It, it, it was Pride weekend, wasn't it? Yeah, right. So so is there? I mean, maybe they were there to celebrate Pride. Well, I you know I may I'm just old school. I mean, I I think I think twerking in public should be a crime. Did I ever tell you, uh, so uh, Dan Proft and I on WLS, we were interviewing Cardinal George. Okay. And he's a big interview. We're interviewing Cardinal George. Yeah. And he was a great guy because he, I, we had to stop for traffic on the five. Excuse me, Cardinal. I know you, you know, got a lot of souls to save and everything, whatever you do in your job, but <laughs> we got to take traffic on the fives. Can you come back in a couple of minutes so we can finish this interview? And he was fine with that. But when we started, I started the interview. It was around the time that Miley Cyrus it kind of like uh, delivered twerking to the world. Nobody knew sure. what it was before Miley Cyrus did this on TV. And I asked him what he thought of Miley Cyrus twerking. <laughs> you know, I think Dan rolled his eyes up in his head. Of course, he, he did that every day with me. But um, Cardinal George said he wasn't familiar with the controversy. So, you know, we do oh. the interview, take the you know traffic on the fives or whatever, come back to finish up an interview. Great interview with him. He was wonderful. And at the end, he volunteers. He says, and, and, and Bruce, I, I'm sorry I didn't know your friend. And I'm no <laughs> way he thought Miley Cyrus <laughs> was my friend, but he was sorry that he wasn't up on that. I mean, you know, yeah. the guy sorry, was aces sorry, in my book. Sorry, sorry so, that your friend twerked, Bruce. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> he assumed it was, I, a, you know, a, a, but that's my Ill, twerking story. Now, as far as I'm illness. concerned, as far as I'm concerned, the, the pestilence that came down from Canada apparently just came one day too late. And it had come the day before those kids, you know, would have been splattered all over the street uh, trying to twerk. Uh, but you're not you're not making a big deal. Maybe to me it's a big deal because it's only four blocks from Wrigley Field. Uh, it's eight blocks from my late father's old hardware store. And, uh, you know, you know, if today, there had been if there tomorrow. If Go there on. had been fires set, if there had been uh, okay. uh, loot, massive looting right. and stuff like that, which which usually follows when you got a big gathering of, of yeah. uh, youth, you know, I, I would have. But I mean, it's uh, it, it looks like it was to me, it looks like, yeah, they were just trying to they were they were trying to cause trouble so that. Yeah. So that then now, they could cry and they right. were discriminated against. All right. You you. Oh, you insolent slut. You, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wh why don't we just have Shana Alexander here while we're at it? The, um, Sun Times had a headline. I didn't read the story, but it was something about that, uh, black drivers are stopped four times more than white drivers are. And I was wondering if that applied to twerking too. Uh, <laughs> but it's, but, if, you know, you know, the answer to that all is, well, that, those are the people who commit the well you know, the infractions not, by yeah, and large yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah it's uh you know until we actually do a study uh, of uh, of things like that like uh like like for instance the broken taillight thing i would say that somebody somebody of a lower economic scale probably is more likely to have a broken taillight right 
Right. That, uh, especially, especially now when it costs like but, 600 bucks to fix a tail light. I'll tell you, the good news is you just gave somebody an idea of how to get into Harvard. You start out your essay saying, I have a broken tail light. I'd like to be able to <laughs> afford one. Please let me into Harvard. I mean, that's, that's you know, that's, that, my that's one thing. But then on the other hand, there was a there was a study in New Jersey. I remember reading about this. They did a study in New Jersey where they set up just a camera in a speed, uh, a speed camera, a, a camera that could look at the driver and uh, look at the speed and uh, the race of the driver and the speed they were traveling. And they found out that uh, son of a gun, uh, there is a racial disparity on uh, driving above the speed limit. Well, but that is trying to make up ground for all the years of discrimination. You, you, I mean, it's like Alice said, you got to keep running just to stay in the same place. Or the Red Queen said that. And uh, so, yeah, I think I it was Charlie and Fla- I think Charlie and Flowers for Algernon. I think that's where that's from. Running up a down escalator. Well, that's running up and down the escalator. But the Red Queen said you got to keep oh, okay. running just to stay. Oh, in the same oh that's place. right. That's right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Charlie said "Twas Brilligan and Slithy Toves. I be- if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. And with the first overall selection in the 2023 NHL draft, the Chicago Blackhawks are very proud to select from the Regina Pats, the Western Hockey League, Connor Bedard. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap uh tim i'm gonna guess that you have like zero interest in connor bedard am i right <laughs> <Who? laughs> <Exactly. laughs> he's That's the a... second coming of patrick kane you know who he is right oh yeah absolutely kind of, sort of. i mean you're you're a detroit guy that's a hockey town uh i mean you yeah. doesn't mean anything to doesn't me. mean darn thing to you yeah. um Here's what I'm worried about. This kid is 17 years old, so he's much younger than my youngest child. Okay. Wow. Did he and, even finish high school? Huh? Did he even finish high school? No. The the they um you don't understand about hockey players. First of all, they're sold into slavery when they're like 13. Well, that's what happened <laughs> with Bobby Hall. Kind of like Russian that's gymnast always, girls. Yeah, I that's I always excuse <laughs> Bobby Hall for you know his transgressions because basically you know. They were plucked from their homes, you know, right off the the ponds, uh, and 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 sold into hockey slavery. But no, they it's a little bit better right now. But this kid is seventeen; he's going to be eighteen next month, so that makes him about six years older than my oldest grandchild. And I I I just can't fathom it. Now, here's the thing: I'm worried about. He's going to be the savior for the Blackhawks, who have been foundering. Um, I'm afraid. I'm really afraid because the kid seems so poised. So good natured and a sensational athlete as well that I'm afraid eventually there's going to be that Tiger Woods moment where his wife and of course he's years from being married. His wife comes out in the middle of the night and takes with a hockey stick, smashes uh, (laughs) his windshield. Now, of course, it won't be like a five iron, which Tiger's wife did. I'm just I'm just worried about that. Now, on the other hand, maybe it won't happen because I think he, you know, Tiger, Tiger's parents. I mean, Papa was a Rolling Stone uh, and, uh, you know, mom was a little bit difficult, I imagine, too. This kid, I think, has, you know, some a couple of good parents. I'm hoping anyway, because I just. I just don't want to see it go bad. <laughs> it's at some point. Uh, Where, where's he? Where's he from? Here's how, here's how ignorant I am. Where's he? He is, uh, or as Chris, our producer says, or like Kane with drinking and being accused of crimes that he didn't commit uh, as well. Uh, he is from, uh, you know, somewhere in Canada. You know, I guess I. Yeah, don't that's, know. What I that's what I figured. That's what I figured. Yeah. It's so you he, just he, assume the Canadian parents are are good parents. They're good. They're yeah. they're absolutely good. Um, so yeah, anyway, he's, he's going to be sensational and, uh, I wish him and, and I may even watch, watch a Blackhawk game or two before the playoffs this year, but you, usually I hold out for the playoffs. So, um, we missed this. St- oh, we sh- should, we mention this? I- so you heard me talking a few weeks ago about Jim crown. Do you remember that? At all? I do. I yeah. do. And we, right, and what we did tried I say to, we about tried to. 
I don't remember, but I remember I remember <laughs> that I I couldn't figure out where he got his billions from. And then exactly. Chris well, Chris sent us a link and I still don't right. know where he got his billions. It's, I think from. it's from Henry Crown was his grandfather and you know sold something to General Dynamics and and I knew Jim Crown and we brought him up a few weeks ago because he had this plan to uh stop crime in the inner city i think you know, he would have cut twerking down in lakeview by to three hours you know, had <laughs> he had the opportunity but um so he had this plan and you know it was kind of a, a do, you know typical liberal do-gooder thing and Gonna impose a twerk view yeah <laughs> so he but he died over the weekend it, he, in, at a like a private raceway in aspen and uh, yeah it, it's kind of sad and i i actually had remembered him from when we were both in the cherub program at Northwestern when we were I, between I our do, junior and senior do, years. Yeah, you I remember, remember the, that. Uh, I remember the jogging? cherub program. Yeah. You're, you're, am I refreshing your recollection now? Yeah. What what is the story that I said? I don't I I made a crack about diapers and a bow and arrow. That's all I, I was close. It was close. So, so that, that you remember <laughs> it's funny, you remember your lines, but you don't remember my, any of mine, and it's pretty good. So um so no, what happened was was uh, we we were we were like in the journalism program and other people were like in the speech program. And I mean, you're talking about budding Northwestern <laughs> people. Sure. OK, so we were going to have a rumble, a fight with the uh, speech people or something like that. And Jim got up on a soapbox or whatever. And this is years before Bill Murray said, it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter as it is a rallying cry for one camp against the other. He says, let's steal their Kleenex. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and then you came up with that line. So there you go. Well, uh, anyway, so he dies. And it's, it's, it's terrible. But here's what I was thinking. Well, could you, you know, ask it, a question? Did he die? Yeah. Did, was he in a car or was he a spectator? Yeah, he was in a car. He was it was a oh. car crash at this private speed. I mean, there you know, nobody's giving any details on it. But huh. here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that a week earlier, he's probably saying to himself, remember, he's a billionaire. Yeah. He's probably saying, to himself, gee, I'm glad I didn't get on that sub. Yeah. OK. And then, you know, and then yeah, I spend my quarter million dollars on this nice, safe race car. <laughs> I mean, gee, I mean, it, it, anyway, it's it's sad, but, uh, you know didn't prevent me from getting out the uh, GI. I'm glad I didn't get out on that sub line. All right. Uh, um, why, and isn't repeating it, why, the story. Why, why isn't it bigger news? I mean, why aren't they, why aren't they recovering the, uh, the, the, the remains I, of the you know, race car and showing it on the evening news? Because he wasn't that, Oh, you know, and of course he gets, you know, all, all the plaudits. I mean, half the quotes were from Valerie Jarrett. I mean, he was, you know, he's a leftist dream. Uh, Pritzker had a quote in there. I mean, maybe that's why it's not a bigger story. I, but he wasn't that he wasn't a household name. I mean, you didn't even know where his wealth came from. No. So um, but he, you know, he was a billionaire. And I had asked him, I, I had reconnected with him like about 10 years ago because I was working for some charity and I called him up and asked, you know, tried to sure. you know, shake him down for some. <laughs> For a so charity, Bruce, Bruce Wolf Retirement Fund. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and he didn't bite on that, but I mean, he's they 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 gave a, they were very philanthropic, especially to the Democratic Party. But um, anyway, so so th that's pretty sad. Uh, I got a checklist of other sports stars. Right, here's what we can politicize. So the Cubs went to London last weekend to play the St. Louis in a couple of games. The a couple of games in in London, the Cubs and the Cardinals. The trip, they only played two games there. So the trip was like, you know, maybe they had a travel day before, a travel day after that. And the Cubs games are on 670, the score, which is the woke sports station in Chicago. I mean, they're all very conscious of discrimination and, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're, they're environmentalists. And I'm thinking... What a waste of fuel. They sent some people from the score <laughs> to go over there. I mean, sure. What a waste of I think they sent the morning team over there and they don't even do the play by play of the games. Uh, I mean, you've got a situation now where some people, the play by play announcers do Zoom uh, broadcasts. They don't even go to the games in some circumstances. What what did they need to send you know, the morning team over there? What a waste of fuel. And, yeah. and, and, you know, and these guys are, 
to um, look at the to look at the trashed soccer field that uh, that's, right. uh, that's going right. to cost uh, going to cost a couple hundred thousand to replace. Oh well, right. I it just cut a big, I, I'm cut a big I'm square in the middle of the soccer field. Yeah, I'm I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of the score. So, um, Kevin Costner is uh, and I love him in Yellowstone. Do you watch Yellowstone? I have not. At all? I, I I've heard about it. No, I have not. I do not have Paramount. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, he it's um, you know he's he's kind of a populist on that show, so you you can kind of like him in that show, but um, he's either has been ordered to or is uh, uh oh no, no his uh, wife is demanding in child support or ex wife is seeking child support for their three children ages thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen, two hundred fifty thousand dollars a month. Okay, and I I got to tell you. What does she think? Is he a? She thinks he's a Biden. (laughs) Here's the thing. I'm thinking if I have the wherewithal, two hundred fifty grand for three teenagers is getting off easy. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I so I'm I'm sympathizing. Kevin, Kevin, just yeah, just just pay the money. That's that's kind of difficult. That's three million. That's a three million dollars a year for the next five years. That's fifteen million dollars. That's he hasn't been soaked that bad since Waterworld. (laughs) Hey, (laughs) oh, okay. Aren't you glad I didn't step on that one, Tim? Aren't you you glad? Uh, We're we're a great team here. (laughs) So, um, hey, we. We cannot. We'd be remiss if we didn't mention uh, the Wagner Group uh, or the Wagner Group, which. I mean, they had this revolution and it was shorter than the Beatles song revolution. I mean, they just went. They yeah. went in, they were going to storm Moscow. They took over Rostov, I guess it was. And then they gave up and the guy. It kind of reminds me of that Peter Sellers film where, where, where that little, that little tiny country decided to take over America. Is that the mouse that roared? Yeah. 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 Right. That's kind of what, kind of whatever. Fredonia. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know anything about Ukraine. I don't know anything about the (laughs) Wagner group, but I know my Fredonia. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. No, so there you go. So, I, well, what happened? What happened to that? You know, why, well, why? well, uh, here, here's, here's Tim's tinfoil hat. Uh, uh, okay, I, I was waiting for it. I mean, I is had to it wait basically, the whole show. basically, Putin and the uh, and Wagner? I don't know what the can't. I can't pronounce the guy's name. Yeah. Conspired to get six billion dollars out of the CIA because you know <laughs> yeah, they I, lost. They just lost six billion dollars. They well, we didn't know where that would go. Uh, well, they were funding the Wagner Group. And it's, uh, right. it's like, I'll pretend to attack. They'll give me the money. And then we, we laugh about it over vodka later. <laughs> I'll tell you, I love when we close a show with either a good joke or a conspiracy theory. And uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Tim Slagle, for that. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the Weekly Wrap. And that's the Weekly Wrap on radio and television. Follow Bruce at Bruce Wolf Shy on Twitter and Tim at TimSlagle.com. The Weekly Wrap with Bruce Wolf, a CP Pods production.